What is this? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like it could be like a really old and hopefully really expensive coin. George the Third, Resolution and Adventure. Sailed from England, 1772. This is interesting. But um, this is this is struck, and it, it has this loop on top, and all of them had that. Okay. But it's it's the real McCoy. This is. I mean, one of the, I mean, so that that was struck in 1772. Absolutely. Oh. Seventy-five hundred to eighty-five hundred dollar item. That, that's, that's amazing. amazing. A photo of and letter by. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I got this in the mid 70s. I went to an auction. There was this table just full of what looked to me to be junk. In that group of stuff was this letter and photograph already framed. I bid $20 on it. My kids aren't interested in it, so you may as well see what I can get for it here at the pawn shop. A big concern I have here is you, it, this is one of the most famous men in the United States, yeah. okay? It wouldn't surprise me if this guy got hundreds of letters every day. I don't know if he could yeah. respond to every one of them. Sometimes they would have a secretary write the letter, or he might have done the whole thing himself. This might have been, went to his secretary, you take care of those, just give me a couple, I'll take care of those myself. Cool. I am a writer. You know, in terms of what this is, it's got great potential. In all honesty, this guy's really sought after. Yeah. This is really neat, uh -huh. you know, if it oh, checks out. I love it. Well, so don't get your hopes up yet. Yours very truly. We see yours very truly. I mean, we're looking at Live Inc. Okay, so it's all legit. Absolutely, there's no question about it. What do you think it's worth? The photograph, the framing, everything included. Right around $1,500. I don't think $300 is gonna do it for me. I would sure like to see 900 bucks for it. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 700 bucks. Yeah, let's do 700. Sweet. Thank you, sir. I will meet you right over there, and gotcha. I will get you some cash. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, this is definitely some money right here. I really want to make a couple thousand dollars a day. And did you have an idea what you wanted for this stuff? Around a thousand bucks. Okay. Um... This is part of a bracelet. Okay. Um, it's, it's a copper alloy. It's probably worth $50. Okay. The complete bracelet uh, is obviously larger and more interesting, about $175 to $200. The bracelet is, it appears to be Viking gold. Auction estimates on it would be something between, you know, 6,000 to 8,000 British pounds, which would be, and I'll, I'll leave it to you to translate. 9,400 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> These right here, I want to give 250. Okay, I, plain and simple, I'll give you 7,000. I will not give you any more. That is what I will give you. It is a more than fair price. Okay, well, for the magical goal, we'll have to settle with that, buddy. I'm gone. Hit the jackpot. It's one of only a few that have ever come onto the art market. So that, that's a wheel lock? This is a wheel lock, about 1,600 in date, yeah. I mean, check this thing out. It's beautiful. Extremely... Complicated. I incredibly complicated. How many did you say? Three? I no. believe only three have ever come onto the art market. The wheel looks 140,000 pounds. Okay. Um, I think I'll pass on this one, but how much are these? They're 100,000 pounds. 100,000 pounds? So would you take 80,000 pounds for them? No, Rick, I wouldn't, wouldn't take 80,000 pounds, but I would take 90,000 pounds. Would you take 85,000? I'll take 85,000 pounds. You have a day. All right. I'd like to try and sell this Colt revolver. This is cool. I came down to the pawn shop today to sell my Colt revolver. I don't know much about Colt revolvers. Mine looks old, and I'm hoping it's worth a lot of money. If I'm able to sell the revolver today, I'll probably just take the family on vacation, maybe a cruise or something. We have a Federal Eagle here. You have the shield, the lances. These were twice as much money as any other comparable gun to it. This is an appraisal on it. I took it in for $25,000. That's what they owe. That's what I'd like to get. You got a piece of magic here. Okay, so what is this piece of magic worth? I would say that at auction, I would safely guess that this would sell for 35,000. If it went above 50, it wouldn't really surprise me. 
All right, so 25, no problem. Amy, what's your best price? 27,500. Gun's yours. We got a deal. Great. I'll meet you right over there. Hi there. Hey, how's it going? Good. Got a uh, 1922 proof high relief matte finish coin. Okay. Whoa. Came down to the pawn shop today to uh, try to sell a 1922 proof coin. The 1922 high relief peace dollar is one of the rarest coins in American history. I definitely want this thing. How much do you want for it? 20,000. <laughs> no, um, no, th this is worth a lot more than 20 grand. Oh. It is in an NGC holder, which is wonderful. The holder is completely intact and genuine. And the coin is perfectly legitimate. It's one of very few known. One of these sold very recently that, that brought a touch over 100,000. It's a little bit nicer than this, but not too far apart. I think this coin is worth something north of 50, but less than 100. I'll give you $65,000. What about 90? I think 90 is fair. I think 75 is fair. Meet me in the middle at 80 and you got a deal. It's a deal. All right. OK. All right, let's go up front. I'll write you up. Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? What do we got? Well, I mean, it definitely looks French. That's about my extent of knowledge on this. Oh, this is really fancy. Boutte or boutet? Boutet? I'm not really good at pronouncing French. I'm here at the pawn shop to try and sell my Boudet shotgun. I got this shotgun from my father. He was a collector of antique firearms. All these pieces down here are really high quality steel, and high quality steel like this was really expensive to make. Well, how much do you want for it? I'm looking at 10 grand. Okay. This is stunning. So, you see Boutet's in some of the finest museums in the world. There's a series of bouteilles at the Met in New York. They are all over Europe. So basically what we may have here is a one-off piece by one of the best French gun makers of all time. The best French gun maker of all time, arguably the best gun maker in history. Okay, um, any idea what it's worth? So the bouté looks all polished up and ready to go? The bouté <laughs> is shiny, yeah. So I think I should shoot it? Yes. I'll, I'll shoot it. I have waited half of my life to shoot a boot day. What do you think it's worth? For 30,000. Damn, that much? 20. I'll give you 15 grand for it. 18. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 16 grand for it. We'll do 16. All right, sweet. A seller came in earlier with a sword pistol that was probably made in the 16 or 1700s. Completely <laughs> ridiculous and really cool at the same time. <laughs> in German, they call it a Hirschfanger. It was made to kill wild boar once they were injured. So it was strictly for hunting. This wasn't a combat type piece. So by about 1700, there really weren't wild boars in England anymore. The interesting thing here is this is a very classic German design. This was about the very nicest Hirschfanger money could buy. So what does a super fancy Hirschfanger go for? If this could fire, it would show that it was truly built properly. If not, the value drops quickly. OK. Okay, we're ready. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> that surprised me. It worked. Yeah, I'm impressed. It's very specific. It's hunting oriented. I think the realistic value in today's market is about twelve thousand dollars. Okay. Sorry to disappoint. All right. I think I can probably do better at an auction or at uh, in one of the specialty shows. All right, man, if you change your mind, give me a call. All right, man, thank you very much for your time. Diamond Tierra. OK. And uh, it was formerly owned by Ida McKinley. God, this is pretty amazing. I'm here on behalf of my brothers. 
This piece was passed down to them. It was made by Dreiser and Son, a very prominent jewelry artist. I'm asking 75,000. Would really like to stay pretty close to that number. What were you looking to get out of it? Uh, 75,000. I really, really like it. It's just putting a value on it is difficult. What would it go in your store? Well, I think in a in a retail store like Fred Layton, we would see this piece sell for $75,000. So what are you thinking? I'll give you 35 grand. It's a lot of money. What's the best you can do? 40. I'd go 43, that would be it. 43 is a fair offer. That's a, that's a, a, that's a great offer, I, and I appreciate it. I'll be back in touch with you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. How can I help you? I have this $20 gold piece coin that I found. Today, I'm coming to the pawn shop to try and sell my $20 gold piece coin. So I'm hoping in gold weight alone, it's worth at least $600. So do you know anything about it? No. I figured it was pretty valuable if I found it in the safe. Good news is it's real. That's great. <laughs> the beautiful thing about this coin is that when Augusta St. Gaudens designed it uh, and presented it to the, the president and to the Mint board, they all agreed that this was the most beautiful coin ever made by the US Mint. That makes the coin worth about $2,000. Oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so what do you want for it? I want $2,000. Okay. How about $1,800 then? No, I will give you $1,500. That's your bottom price? That's what I could do. All right. Okay, $1,500. Got a deal? Thank you, yes. Thanks a lot. All right, let's go do some paperwork. All right. What do we have? We have a pottery duck from Colima, Mexico. I'm at the pawn shop today to sell my old pottery duck. I got the duck from an antique shop in Scottsdale, Arizona, and ever since then, just weird things, you know, happening around the house, and couldn't figure out what it was until everything started falling around the duck. So that's why I'm looking to sell it. I'm asking $4,000 for the duck because it looks pretty old. I mean, it does have magic powers. Ever since I've had it, it's just some weird things have been happening around the house. Well, what kind of weird stuff happens? Well, things like fall off the shelves. I hear weird noises. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably not the duck's fault. <laughs> One of the things that I'm noticing, it's got the burnishing lines. So they would use a stone and they would polish this extensively before it would go in the kiln. Got nice manganese blooms, 100% real, 300 BC to 300 AD, ancient. So what's it worth? 8,000. Okay. So you want 4,000 for it? Okay, I mean, I give you four because it, it does take a long time to sell it. Okay, awesome, All right. please. You wanna go write her up? All right, um, luckily I'm not superstitious, so I'll meet you up over there. All right. And he's gonna pay her in $100 bills. <laughs> Let's do it. I have a watch here. Okay. Apparently, it's an old watch. I hope so. Mind me asking what you paid for it? $20. <laughs> I came into the pawn shop today to try to sell my antique pocket watch. I'd like to sell it because I don't collect pocket watches. If I get $500, if I get $800, I'll be happy. Anything works for me. This is absolutely amazing back here. Um, Earl Butler Hero saved my life at Cross Keys, Robert M. Scott. That's, um... Something good? That is something good. It's, I'm assuming that's the Civil War. The Battle of Cross Keys was an interesting one. This was early on in the Civil War, and this was Stonewall Jackson, one of the best known generals on the southern side. I mean, the watch is really cool. I mean, it seems like it's from the right time period and everything like that. Do you think it's legit? Okay, the engraving is all hand done. In looking at it, I think that this is This appears to be correct to me. What do you want for it? 2,000. I mean, the two people on there are really not known. So, 700 bucks. But the battle's known. 1,800. If it didn't have that engraving on it, it's literally worth four or 500 bucks. 
Let me give you a thousand dollars for it. How about fifteen? I'll go thirteen hundred. Not a dime more. Thirteen will work. Okay, thirteen hundred. All right. I'll meet you right up front over there. All right. Thanks. I brought you some autographed Hollywood postcards from the 1950s. Babe Ruth. Whoa. The collection is over 250 vintage Hollywood autographed postcards. I am hoping to get 2,500 for it today, and I think I'll take around $1,000. Let's start here. Where did you get them? My great uncle was a grip in uh, Hollywood in the 50s, and he would have them sign them and then send them to my mom, and uh, she gave them to me. This is incredible. We got John Wayne. Lucille Ball. I can understand it, you know, how we would be able to get them. An actor's less likely to say no to an autograph if they have to work and see somebody every day. I was thinking 2,500 for all of them. Okay, um, basically I need to make sure your uncle wasn't just trying to impress your mom every couple months by sending her one of these. Um, Understandable. You mind if I call someone in to take a look? He's probably one of the best signature experts you're gonna get. Okay, sounds great. That's pretty rare you see like a, you know, just a whole collection like this. You know, obviously this wasn't gotten overnight or whatever. I mean, it's just a massive stack. Tell me a little bit about the history. I mean, we're looking at a bunch of deceased celebrities, stuff that you're not going to get signed anymore. And the most important thing to collectors, that's a vintage dated signature. And that's a really big deal. Actually, it's probably one of the best collections I've ever seen. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how rare this stuff is. Frank Sinatra. Do you even know Frank Sinatra was in here? No, no idea. Say you're learning something new every day. Yeah. From 1954. This is at basically the height of Frank Sinatra. You're looking at anywhere from about eight to twelve thousand dollars. Wow. What do you want for him now? Start at eight thousand, then. <laughs> I'll give you six grand. You gonna take six grand? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, that works. This is a model 1894 Marlin. This is like the nicest Marlin you could order out of the catalog, period. Just, a, just about. I purchased this gun from a guy, believe it or not, who was 88 years old. That's some pretty amazing engraving on this thing. Yeah. You've got platinum and gold on the trigger. I mean, this gun is top notch, right down from the gun itself to the amazing engraving. To say I'm interested would be an understatement. And how much were you looking to get out of it? I'm looking for 41,000. I'm thinking like 20,000. I, I think that's a fair price on the gun. 28,500. 21,000. That's the best I will go on it. 21,000. I got to make money. I think I'll do it. Okay, we got a deal, man. I'll meet you right up front. I'll, we'll write this up just a bit work. I brought in a Bira gun. This is nice. A Bira. It was named for the king of Nepal. I've seen pictures of this gun before, but I've never seen one in person. To be able to see this one today is really interesting, and it's in beautiful condition. They were only made in 1896 and 1897. All right, sweet. So they're completely legal to own. This fires only with each crank. Cool. Yeah, it is an amazing piece. Well, if it blows up, I'll take care of your wife. <laughs> This gun is awesome. I mean, really, it's that cool. It looks really, really steampunk. It looks really neat. It looks really weird. It's a great showpiece. The market value for these is about 27,500. OK. I'll give you 18 grand for it. I can't do 18 grand. How about 26? 20,000 is the most I can do. It's the most I can pay and still make sense, plain and simple. I can do 20,000. All right, sweet. This is an 1838 Colt Patterson pistol. I'm a military and gun collector. I swap, buy, trade a lot of different guns. Probably go as low as 12,000. So what's so special about this gun? Now, before this gun, the only real reliable guns out there were the single shot cap and balls. This was the first successful repeating gun. Yeah, this was the very first one that used a rotating cylinder for a single barrel. Easily worth every penny of $15,000 in this condition with this story. And the serial number is 
two. Whoa. It's the second Colt ever made. It's priceless. This is a really big deal. Okay. I mean, it's a really big deal. This doesn't become an undesirable gun. It just means it's got mismatched serial numbers. Okay. That being said, what's it worth now? 25. 100? 1,000. Okay. Yes. Hey, what do you want for the gun? How about 19? How about 17? I'll give you 15. 15, huh? Yeah, All I right, can do yeah. 15. Tell me we'll write you up. Pretty good, what can I do for you? I just came in to sell my helmet here. I feel like Magneto. I'm here at the pawn shop today to try and sell my iron helmet. How much are you looking to get? Uh, I want to get 750 for it. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's worth 750. What you've got appears to be an authentic Anglo-Saxon helmet. So let's take a look at it. So it's made 99.76% iron. Okay. And then traces of copper, zinc, chromium. This is carbon okay. steel. So this is what it should be made out of. Okay. It's official? It's a one in a million. I mean, it's that rare. All right, and the most important question, what's it worth? A lot. 15,000. $15,000. $15,000. 7,500? Seven, no, can't do 7,500. The expert said uh, 15,000, so I think we'll start at 15,000. It's one in a million fine. How about, uh, about 11,000? 95. $10,000? 10 big ones. So for $10,000, you have a deal. $10,000, it's yours. Pleasure. I'll meet you over at the counter. <laughs>